Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to read and write in one of the easiest programming languages around. Welcome everyone, and today the main subject is going to be syntax and HTML. Now, before we directly jump into exactly what this is, I want to uh, suggest a platform to use while you follow along in the series with us. Now, this platform is called CodePen, and I, we think it's a great tool at Loop Coding Center because all you need to do is get onto Google, type in codepen.io, press on a link, and suddenly you're on their homepage. And with a simple click on the Start Coding button, you can jump right into their platform and have a nice sandbox for programming anything that is web-based. So, for our, these lessons, we're primarily to, to begin with, we're primarily going to be focusing on HTML. So, if you're looking at your screen, I'm going to drag this window down here. And you might actually begin with something that looks a bit more like this. However, my preference lands in having my code to the left and my window to the right. So, before we jump into exactly what syntax is and how it works, we're going to review some quick symbols to help us along with these lessons. So. I'm going to start with three symbols that we're all quite familiar with, and those will be the exclamation mark, the period, and the question mark. These won't really help us when it comes to programming, but they'll help us understand how our programs read. Next, we'll start off with a less than symbol. This less than symbol will kind of work in the same way that this upside down exclamation mark works in this hola. It lets us know when something's about to begin, but it doesn't serve the same purpose as this normal exclamation mark in telling us how something ends. Which is at the exact job of the greater than symbol. Now, less than and greater than are usually used in math, whereas here in HTML, they're referred to as the opening and closing brackets. Finally, we have our forward slash, which will be the final piece in helping us create what's referred to as a tag. So here I'm typing out an opening tag, which will be followed by a closing tag. Now, I just want you guys to take a second and tear apart the format of what you're looking at, and I'll explain it in just a second. So now that we have all of those definitions down, let's go ahead and review what syntax actually is. In a normal everyday case, Syntax would kind of look like some, look something like this. The world was peaceful. Let's say that, right? Now, in this case, I start my sentence with a capital and end with a period. Let's say uh, I was feeling very aggressive that day and I changed how it ended with an exclamation point. Or I was really curious, was the world peaceful? Now, these uh, three symbols actually work as a case of uh, the way of ending a sentence. And this will be important when it comes to programming because computers actually aren't that smart. Computers will do uh, and execute what we tell them to do according to the simple rule and the same way we read. Well, they'll start from top to bottom, left to right, and in this way, they'll execute code based on whether or not they're told to start, kind of like in the same way we know when to start a sentence when there is a capital letter and when to end with a period, exclamation point, or a question mark, right? So moving forward, um, let's go ahead and start our first line of code using the rules of HTML. Earlier, we touched on a less than bracket. Just go ahead and start. And that's exactly where we will start. So, starting with this less than tag, we're going to go ahead and learn our first element. This element actually is used in HTML and isn't like the X's I was using earlier. And this tag will be what we know as a P or paragraph tag. Computer programmers are lazy and like using acronyms because they don't want to type the whole thing out every time they want to create a paragraph. So, in this case, we'll follow our P, or in this case, what we'll define as our element, and put it inside and in between a less than and greater than bracket. So, let's break down this anatomy real quick. 
we have our less than symbol, which is our opening bracket, our element san sandwiched in between, and closing on the top is the greater than symbol, or our closing bracket. Altogether, these three symbols are what's known as a tag. So, this, in this case, this will be our opening tag. And we'll actually go ahead and give this tag some content. So let's say I like to code. Now we could keep typing and keep adding things to our code from here on out, but just in the same way that our exclamation mark ends our sentences, we're going to go ahead and write out a way for the computer to understand where to end. So in this case, I'm going to use my less than or opening bracket again, and this time we'll follow it with that forward slash. I didn't give you much explanation for that symbol earlier on, but in this case, I'll go ahead and place it right after the less than symbol, and then follow it by the same element we started the sentence with. Now, this is kind of similar to that hola I had uh, uh, printed out earlier. We start and end with the same thing so that the whole way through, we understand the context of what's going on. And in this case, we are giving this computer the context to start and end a paragraph. So, I like to code is all put inside of our opening and our closing tags. So before we can say we fully have learned how to comprehend uh, HTML code and how to read it, let's clear up some common misconceptions that people run into. So to begin with, let's uh, make sure we properly define what our parts of our codes are. So let's go ahead and start with this little p sandwiched in between the less than and greater than symbol. Now earlier you heard me refer to it as an element, however, just like this P is an element, so is this entire first line. Now, you may ask, they're completely different things. How are they the same? They aren't, but they have the same name. So, when I refer to this element right here, I'm referring to the same way someone might refer to iron. You can hold the iron in your hand, and it's made up of thousands of atoms that are iron. However, it isn't until you have that entire thing that you actually refer to it as iron. It's not, so in this case, this P would be similar to our single atom, whereas the entire thing is the entire iron bar that we have on our hands. So that will clear up exactly what an element is, however, let's just make sure we have what a tag is and know exactly how to define an opening and closing one which is usually pretty simple you just know that one comes before the other and the ending one has the forward slash right after the less than symbol pretty simple stuff so jumping past that you might run into issues where oh no i accidentally put another symbol in between here now if code pen, which is really smart, at, uh, automatically put in the G in the closing tag for me, things will work fine. But let's say, ah, oh, this code editor is too smart for me. Let's say you accidentally put an extra symbol in here. Now, these symbols will most likely break the code in an actual use case, but in this case, we're using a smart editor. So, usually you'll fr run into issues of uh, missing the forward slash and then that will completely break a following line of code that might print out an absolutely different thing. So maybe the image you wanted suddenly becomes text and that's all because the, the devils are in the details and if you miss these forward slashes or in some cases even just missing a period in certain languages will absolutely destroy your code. So make sure to pay attention to even those little details. And even though it might uh, hurt your head a little to just repeat the same things over and over again, eventually it will become second hand and you'll be able to do it uh, without a second thought. So uh, another issue you might run into while typing out a, uh, a line of code or 
some syntax in HTML will be that you just miss one of the symbols and this, in most cases, would be enough to break your code. Now, the final thing to touch on is the fact that just never put the closing tag in front of the opening tag. Pretty simple rules to follow. Think of writing these things as sentences and each of these sentences as a block that you can start stacking on top of another. So, believe it or not, that's actually it. Learning how to read HTML comes down to understanding opening and closing tags, just like reading a sentence. So, hopefully you guys can join us later on this week as we touch on more than just the paragraph tag and actually touch on headers as well. But, if anything else, I'd really like for you guys to go back through this video and code along while you're use, using CodePen to go ahead and try and break the code. I honestly dare you. But until next time, have a nice day.